Something good is in the tension of what God is asking you to wait for. Something good is in that tension, but you have to believe that he is good. Yes. Right? Uh, Hebrews eleven six. 6, you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. And his rewards are for the now and for the age, age to, to come, come, though with persecutions, right. though with Suffer. tensions, though with sufferings. You're going to get made fun of. It's going to hurt. You're going to be crying out to God, but it's all worth it. If you don't believe that, then you can't do that. And we had believed that. We also were tested in how much we believe that through our trial. So it wasn't just going through it well. It was being stretched right. to truly believe it and go through it. All right, so uh, my name is CD. This is my lovely bride forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. Melody, Caridad, La Luz, Fabian. Oh, you used my maiden name. I, well, it means delight. That's just an awesome name. Yeah, I'll keep it. It's nice. Hello, everybody. I'm Melody, and I am the Melody to uh, my husband, CD. <laughs> making music. <laughs> We're making music. Ah, I hope you're well today. I'm a little sleepy today. Mm, wake up. Because my little toddler was all up in the bed. Caffeinated. At like 2 a.m. for no reason. You need that caffeine to activate. Yes. So what are we talking about today, my love? <clears throat> today we're going to be talking about a hard topic that I think a lot of people go through, whether you're single or married. And it's how do you live in the tension of not yet? How do you live in the tension of not yet? When That's the entire Christian life. It literally is. <laughs> because you're waiting, right? The, the waiting doesn't stop for us. Um, we're waiting on answered, unanswered prayers. We're waiting on God for direction in mm. a relationship. We're waiting mm. on God. When's the right time to date? When's the right time to get married? Then you get married, you're waiting on God for other things, a certain job, your calling, children, a you home, know, you know, buying your first home together, yeah. businesses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh waiting is a is a constant uh situation or circumstance we find ourselves in, uh walking with God. He does something during that time of waiting. Mm. Um, but that's that's sometimes imperceptible. So, yeah, what are some? So you, earlier you mentioned like waiting in like like for relationships. So right, yeah. So that's a that's a big one. Um, waiting for relationships. So we went through that. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes. So you had a little bit different experience than mm -hmm. I did. But when I was twenty, the Lord told me to break up with this guy that I thought was the one. Yep. It was a really painful breakup. Um, and I was at a place of just like, God, whatever you want, I'll do it. You yeah. know, God, what you want? And he's like, I want you to be single. I was like, mm, let's pray again. Lord, what is your will? And he said to me, I want you to be single for seven years. So a lot of people know this part of our testimony. Some um, don't, some, some do. Mm -hmm. If you want to check out the whole deal, you can uh, just search for CD and Melody testimony. But in the context of waiting, Waiting for seven years. He said, like, no dating for seven years. No dating. So you're 20 years old. 20. And you're believing that God has told you to wait. Ooh, yes. So how did you know that's what God was saying? And how did you wait? Not knowing what's going to happen after that time. Did you did you immediately think, okay, so I, if I do this, then the answer to my prayer must naturally be right after my seven years of waiting? Um, God didn't give me the fine print. He okay. just said, trust me and don't date for seven years. So how do you, for 365 days times seven. Oh, wow endure waiting <laughs> oh my not goodness. knowing right because he didn't say 
I need you to stop and dating. And, and, and then man. there's going to be a Right. There's no promise of anything. Mm. If it, I understand your yeah, story yeah, yeah. right. It's like I, I sensed it was for a purpose. Like I sent he, I knew I'm, I want to be married one day. I knew this is my desire that I prayed for a husband, but I had this sense, like he just doesn't want, like it doesn't want me to have that in the next seven years. So now you're describing a combination of a, of, of a word that you're receiving and having to obey with a hope, with the tension of hope that, yeah. that, that your, the desires of your heart. Yep will be fulfilled but but God is giving you at the very least a a 7 year deferment. Sheesh. Yeah. But still, how do you do that yeah. for 365 days times 7? What is um, that? Let me calculate yeah, go ahead that. And calculate that. But I'll answer your first question. You said something like how did I know? Well, I think one of the things is when God gives you a word about something, it is important to make sure that it's in alignment with God's word and it's in alignment with your community. Okay. And there are many people who are called to wait in the scriptures. So right. I was like, okay, that's not against the word. Abraham, wait, Jacob, wait, Joseph, uh, Joseph wait, you know, Elizabeth, wait, Moses, wait, oh my goodness, Elizabeth, all throughout the word, everybody, wait, David anointed Sarah. as a boy, wait, yeah, so I was like, okay, it's, it's in alignment with the word, but uh, I spoke to four spiritual leaders and they all confirm, like, man, God's doing something special with you. So okay. I was like, okay, this is from the Lord. And then it wouldn't go away. That's another thing. Okay. Like every time I prayed, it was like, so give I'm, me I'm going to give this kind of preachy, all right? Okay. So, so revelation of a word confirmation of the word okay that's good conviction of the word i think we need like some organs revelation this is how i think confirmation because if i'm somebody listening to this i'm like man that's good like how do i remember that yeah that's just i think that's just what came to my mind right now revelation revelation so you know we believe that god speaks to us through the word by his spirit in times of prayer so forth and so on but we don't just go run yeah. Right. You, 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 we live our Christian faith in community. Yes. So you had shared it with some people or, you know, they, they, so you said four different spiritual leaders, leaders yeah. four spiritual leaders. So you have a, you have a community that, that, that's identifying it and confirming it, not just going, hmm, I'll pray about that. Right. Or, uh, you know, they, they actually come back and they They're confirm like, it. Yeah, God, so now God's you know, but then also there's an internal, like, I can't give this up. Yeah, like it won't go away. It won't go away. I'm convicted to obey. I have to obey. Right, right. And yet I have my hand open loosely, right? And one of the spiritual leaders who I brought this to that I felt the Lord told me to bring it to was my dad. And I said, Dad, I want you to help me discern when it is time. If God is telling me to cut it or not, but I'm going to go for my seven years. So that's also biblical because in uh, in Torah it it says that if if a if a woman makes a vow, the only ones who can have authority and natural authority that God recognizes to break that vow is her husband or her father. Right. And we're not under the law anymore, but that's something from the word. But it's a principle. It's a principle, yeah. It's a principle. And that was the principle, and that was the scripture I held on to. And so I did it. So you kind of had a back door out. Like, if my dad ever says, I can be done, yeah, I can be done. I was really hoping for that. <laughs> but I know your dad. He was like, we're going to see this thing through to and, the end. You know, and I thought that too. I'm like, do you want me to be single till I'm 27? He's like, no, mama, I want God's will for you. Come on, somebody. That's good. And so I think it's just so important. Ephesians 1, Colossians 1, like it's all about like, I pray you would know the will of God, right? Like we need to know his will. And so I was like, all right, God, I'm doing this. And man, seven years, how did I do it? Well, one of the things that God had me do was cut my hair. I had a very long hair like I have now. Praise the Lord. And... um. I cut my hair with something that the Lord called me to do. So every you just time, cut it short. Like you didn't yeah, it was bald like right it. here. Yeah. Right. Every time you cut your hair, you're going to remember my commitment with you. And there's so, so many scriptures. You didn't just one time cut it. 
No, I just kept it, it shoulder was a main, length. It was a maintenance. The Lord said you cannot have your hair long in the season, which is which is also biblical. Yeah, there's many vows about hair. Right. You, I just just you could just do a study vows hair. Sure. There's so much in Scripture, and so it's like a visual reminder of what. But God uh, asked you to do that. He did. Okay. So, and that was through reading the word. Like I was reading the word about Paul shaved his head when he made a vow. And I felt the Lord say, I want you to cut, you, keep your hair short during this vow. And I'm like, what? People don't think I'm crazy, bro. Like I can't even talk about this with people, but people who, you know, hear the Lord and read his word. They, they were like, often thought that they're crazy. Yes. They're like, Melody, God's doing something special with you. So I think it's funny. That the year I made my, not funny, but God, the year I made my seven year commitment, a couple months later, CD gets saved. No, all the way around. The same year you gave your commitment was the same year I got saved, but I got saved in March of the year 2000. You started your commitment in June of 2000, three, year, three months earlier. That's what I just said, babe, a couple months apart. No, you said a couple months later. Like you didn't oh, make the oh, vow, and oh, a couple oh, months later okay, I got apart. saved. Yeah, sorry. But 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 three months apart, I'm saved. So the way I always recognize it is like I got saved, but the Lord had already been talking to you, and then eventually, you started your vow three months later. Yeah. And I like to say that the Lord already reserved, you know, my spouse for me, but. He put Melody on reserve for seven years because <laughs> I was so jacked up. I would need that much time to get prepared to to truly properly pursue you and be a man of God. And God has a process for everything that we don't know. So God is working a million things. He was things. also preparing you for me. Yes, and he had a lot of work to do we through me. we were both me. hot messes. And he had a lot of work to do in us and through us. And so good. I had to respect the process not knowing what God is doing. And this is a word. God is doing a million things and you're aware of like two of things. Okay. Two of them, two or three. And so you mm. don't know what he's doing in the timing. You don't know what he's doing in the process, but I have to just trust him. So how did I wait? I kept reviewing what he told me. And I think cutting my hair was, you know, a visual reminder. This is what I'm doing. I had my, ring for my purity commitment that right. I'm going to save sex for marriage. And then I added another ring on top for my seven year. So it was kind of interesting because it kind of felt like I the wedding band yeah. and another ring. And it was like my commitment of like, I'm not just saving sex for marriage and walking in purity, mind, body, heart, but I'm also waiting in seven years. So how I had to verbalize it when guys were like, Oh, can I take you off for coffee? I'm like, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, just so you know, uh, I can't date for another five years, so I'm verbalizing it. I'm it's before so that, that's me. That's got to be awkward. It was awkward. That's got to be weird. It was hard. <laughs> so, so maintaining this vow was also very inconvenient, strange. Yeah, you can't care what people think. You got to trust you can't the Lord. Care what people think. And so, then some people were like. Yeah, but like, is there going to be a guy at the end of this? I was like, I don't know. I have to trust God. So so in the interim, God's building your faith in him, your obedience. You're right. I got to trust God. Yep. But you also said that you, you, you have to not care what people say. Yes. So that then also like I hear uh, Jeremiah. He's like, you know, don't be dismayed by their, faces. by their faces. Yes. So God is teaching you how to have, you know, stone face. You know, how, how Face to, like a flint. Like, yeah, right? A flint is a stone that you sharpen your knife with, right? So like... Unmoved. Unmoved, right? Un unmovable. And I so was moved by certain people and I would go home and cry sure. and be like, Lord, are they right? You know, so like... it's not that he's just showing you, hey, be unmoved. Like, he's making you yes. unmovable yes. through the process. The process. So part of the process, because now what's happening is there's been other times in your life since then, we've been married and all, where you have to step into a new role and it's uncomfortable because the fear comes up of what will they say? What will they think? Yes. And you can go back to previous experience and says, God made me unmovable here. He's And so now I have that characteristic to come into here. Right. Right. So right. he's making you into something. And that's the thing. When we're in our process of waiting to wait well, you need to be in your word. 
Okay. You need to abide in God. So what does that mean for people who don't know? John 15, like, you know, when you got your music in your AirPods, like you're always listening to music. You always got a podcast in your ear. That's how you are with the spirit of God. You always talking to the Lord. You're always abiding with him. You're, you're listening to him. You're reading his word. You're talking to God. It is a, I'm with you. You live in me and we're talking to each other. Yeah. So um, you referenced earlier that you would review what God had said on a regular basis. So we were looking the scripture up earlier, right? First Timothy 118. Yes. So Paul tells to Timothy, this charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and good conscience. 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 By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck their faith, mm. among whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. Just side note, when Paul mentions handing somebody over to Satan, it's that they would repent. Yes. So the idea there is he, he, he must have excommunicated them or something like that because they had fallen from the faith and had been doing some things that were inappropriate within the church and uh, to be buffeted. But check this out, to be reminded, so you said that, that you had to remember the prophecies, right? Because this is the word of God. Right. Right. This is, this is not like memorizing scripture. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus says to you. Yes. That's supported by scripture and confirmed by cult, by the community. Right. And, and, and it stayed with you, right? Conviction. And so rehearsing that, uh, it says that by then that you may wage the good warfare. Yes. Because when you would falter, when you would be tempted to cave in, when you would be tempted to fear what others may think, th this is actually not just on the natural level. It's it's spiritual warfare. It is. Yes. Go ahead, talk about that some. Yes, because the enemy doesn't want you going to where God is calling you. Okay. So he's gonna he's gonna do whatever he can to distract you. He's gonna do whatever he can to 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 get you off track. Right. And so whether that's you know I want you to wait seven years or I want you to pray for this or I want you to you know whatever he wants you to do the enemy doesn't want you to do that so let me jump in here you know we were going to go the route where like you share your testimony and I share mine because because thankfully they're different so we can like talk to different people at different different stages or yes, different experiences yes. but instead of going like like you go I go let's go back and forth okay because there are a lot of similar lessons I learned yes through in the same manner, but but it was it was different experience. Um, so because you didn't have a necessarily, I didn't like, have a specific be time. single for this many years. No, it's just mine was just like I'm just me. walking with Jesus. So yeah. just what you were saying earlier, right? I'm just walking with God. So when I get saved, I'm convicted immediately about certain aspects of my my lifestyle. But then other aspects over time, I'm just in sanctification, maturing into unto the head. Um, I'm growing, I'm growing, and, and things were falling off of me that were sin, but also directives from God, yeah. revelations, right? right. So what did I say? Revelation, confirmation, and conviction. Yeah. So for me, it was like when I decided that I was not going to kiss another girl until I got married, reading through scripture, I had that personal conviction because I, I asked God about holiness. Then we just started having a conversation. I'm, I'm reading 1 Timothy 1 about be holy for I'm holy, but then we start having a conversation. And as God and I are having a conversation, he shows me the, the 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 how I can restore the value of a kiss. So that's what he's saying to me. Yeah. So um the way that that got confirmed in my community is I actually witnessed uh the first gentleman who who I asked to like spend time to to Disciple walk me you? through discipleship, his name was uh, Maurice. Mm -hmm. Is Maurice Nelson? Um, I watched him how he because so in the time that I was being discipled by him, he was just starting dating his now wife, uh, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. And mm -hmm. uh, Maurice and Nikki. Maurice told me his conviction and that he was not going to kiss Nikki till they got married. Wow. So I watched how they did that because because I was the third wheel when they went on some of their dates, not all of them, but, you know, and visited place. I watched that. That became a conviction. For now, when you heard him do that, was that crazy for you? Was that like, 
out of the box crazy or no, because the Lord was already telling you the same thing. Yeah. Um, I, oh man, so long ago, I don't recall it striking me as like, what the heck? What, what yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't remember it striking mm -hmm. me that way. I think, I, th I think I was more intrigued because I was watching it be lived out in front like, of me. You're like, oh, this is possible. I'm right? like, oh, okay. So when they got married, I saw it. Yeah. It became a, it, so, so for me, visual it was, it was image. a visual and it yeah. was community. It was community by example. Yeah. I didn't necessarily tell him, Hey, I'm going to go do the same yeah. thing, but I just, I witnessed it. Yeah. Then another thing is, um, our, our mutual roommate at one point we were all living together. Um, another, another gentleman that he was discipling, a good friend of mine, Lewis Freeman. I don't, I don't recall if Lewis and Vanita High that they, um, that they didn't kiss, but, but maybe they didn't. But I felt like at, at some level, the three of us, we just shared commonality of conviction, of purity, of purity, waiting. Of waiting yeah. and, that sort, and so like we were able to encourage each other. God, I feel so power behind this because, because there's something about like clustering. Come on. That's a good word. We clustering. gotta be around the Positive right people. Yes. Because 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 we we've been hearing accounts of people who've been falling away from the faith in clusters, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, of falling Divorce. out of, rela of relationships, yep. marital in clusters. Can we redeem the clustering? <laughs> and and oh, can we redeem the clustering and hold people to the faith? Yes, you right? can. Because John says that. Right. John says, "Hey, when you see somebody falling." in a way that leads to death. I'm not telling you to pray about that. I take that as, hey, go say something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go communicate something. Call them out. Hey, what you're doing? What Paul just said. Hey, man, I handed them over to Satan if you got authority. But like, say something. Because when that man in Corinth had slept with his father's wife, he, Paul said, kick him out. Say something. Do something. So that Satan would buffet him and his life might be saved. Because he was falling away from the faith. Like you can fall away from the faith. You can walk away. God is not letting you go. Right. You're walking. Yeah. It's not about us losing salvation. It's yeah. a choice. Right. Jesus said those who remain in the faith through to the end, those who endure Til through the end. to the end. Right. So the, say something. That's a cluster effect. Yeah. So what do we read by 2 Corinthians? Paul's pleading to, hey, he's repented. Bring him back. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Yeah. So the clustering for Maurice Lewis and I was that we were affirming and encouraging each other's faith in this walk of this is what it can look like. And we weren't some weirdos telling everybody that like kissing is a sin or no. anything like that. It was just you something. You were following that, conviction. We were following. And then it was my own conviction. Right. Right. As well. Mm. So then as I'm reading through the scriptures, uh, so as it pertains to waiting, this got hard because because not because because the temptation of self-righteousness kicked in for me in my story, because I'm recognizing myself among my fraternity brothers. I'm not having sex. I'm not doing those kind of things anymore. Mm -hmm. I stopped going to the parties. Right. I just relegated myself to the responsibilities I had for some of our our, our community service and work. Right. Um. I'm seeing the world do their thing. I'm not doing that thing. Among some of the Christian brothers, outside of the three of us, not everybody was in relationships where they were not kissing and stuff right, like that. Doing so what they I feel do. like, man, I'm tightened up. Like I'm like God got me on lock. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm thinking, okay, the reward then is going to be great. But then I'm seeing, like I saw in one year span, four different marriages from different groups that were close to me. So but, but four people get married. Four different people. So four different close friends of mine get married. A couple from the church that I was going to, but from other, like the church community at large mm -hmm. that I was close to. And I was like, yo, when am I going to get married? Come on. Because I don't have a seven year time frame right. of being You're like, when is it going to happen? I'm, I'm just literally year, right? I came up with the number. It was like 3,550, something like that. But that's for seven years. Well, I did seven years. Um, waiting 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 day by day you you have kind of like an end goal in sight with some sort of okay we'll see what happens yeah, then yeah, after yeah. That. i have no end goal in sight i'm just like <laughs> it could be tomorrow i hope it's tomorrow <laughs> i meet her i just have no clue yeah. so what god is doing in me mm. is endurance Oh God, the day to day day to day the day by day don't know what's going to happen don't know yeah just and obedience. are you kind of just waiting for God to reveal to you a woman to pursue. And 
And and again, let please don't let it get it twisted. It it was it was not just not easy. You know, you talk about doing it well, yeah, right? Doing right, it well. Right. This is where we left off. We'll talk about we'll talk about doing it well for yes, a minute. Yeah, go doing ahead. Doing it well doesn't always mean that uh it like you coasted through it. No. Doing it well doesn't mean like like we just pulled our boots from the bootstrap and we mm-hmm. made it happen. No. I'm talking about they were there were days and nights I am screaming at God, yelling at God, this is not fair. Uh, this is not fair. So that's actually what happened. So, so <laughs> for me, God upped the ante. So one night I'm talking to God like, God, this is not fair. This is the fourth wedding I've been to and all of my friends and like they're enjoying their spouse. They're having sex, this and that and the other. They're going to start having their babies. What about me? And Holy Spirit just says, hey man, you're kind of making me jealous. And I'm like, what? You're kind of making me jealous. Like, like, am I not good enough? This is where you hit me. But what if I don't want you to be married? Right. So now waiting may, may be indefinite. And I think that that's what God does in the waiting is we lay down all the idols. We lay it down. And, and all he revealed to me ifs. that marriage mm. was an idol, sex was an idol mm. like like even family because I, I since i was a little boy i want a family i've always wanted to just be mm. a husband and a father that yeah, like yeah, i never yeah. really strove to be anything greater than a good dad just a good husband and a father and so now you're putting like god is asking you a question to put on the altar to put that down that you may never have a family what if i never so like growing up okay this is weird my favorite movie of all time is the sound of music and these little white Please Austrian dudes in Europe, Some right people before are World Googling War II, Sound of Music yeah, right Sound now because they don't know what that is. Right, sorry. We watched it with it's my family a couple weeks ago, <laughs> and my kids, my two-year-old and my thirteen-year-old, are singing the songs in in the car. It's so fun. But I love th- this. That brother had seven children. He wanted a bunch of kids. I wanted a bunch of kids. Mm. I I just wanted like yeah. my whole couch and just watch a movie together, eating popcorn. So you lay it all down. So I have to die to that. Mm. Not knowing if I'm going to get it back. Yeah. So now there's a similarity. Right. You don't know what's going to happen in seven years. Nope. I don't know what's going to happen day by day. Yep. God's telling you to lay it down. God's telling me to lay it down. And trust. And trust him. Because I have to trust in his sovereignty, meaning he's good. He knows all things, right? He's omniscient. I have to trust in his goodness. We have to trust in his character. You have to stand on God's character when you're when you're in the waiting. And also on God's promises. I think mm. God's character, okay, so I'm just doing another alliteration. If we don't believe that God's personality is good, then it's hard to follow Jesus. Yes. When Jesus says, "Come to me all you who are heavy and and uh, weary and heavy laden," And 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 come to me, right? And put my let me put my yoke upon you. Yeah, it's a uh, it's Matthew eleven twenty eight. No, I'm gonna I'm oh, getting 20. another verse as okay. you say that. Right? Then 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 like say it says, again. Sorry, I want that. Okay. that's a really good point. If Jesus is saying, "Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, weary and heavy laden. Let me and take up my yoke." He's he's asking for an exchange. You have a burden. I have a burden. Give me your burden, I'll give you my burden, right? And by burden, he means a yoke mm. through which you do work. So you are bared down heavy through the way you're going through life. Right. Let me put my yoke, which you put on an oxen to th- tread grain. Let me put my yoke upon you. Go through life my way. Mm. For my way is easy. My burden is light. And I will give rest to your weary souls. If we believe that about God, then we have to believe his personality is good to trust him. Right. That he will right. give us times of rest. So then that becomes part of his promise. His mm. promise is that it's worth it. Right. It's worth it. It's eternally worth it and it's naturally worth it. When the disciples were saying, well, the, the rich man, he was like, man, it's easier for a cat to go through a needle, uh, a camel to go through a needle than a rich man to come into mm-hmm. heaven. Mm-hmm. They were like, well, what about us? We've given up everything for you to follow you. He right. says, you, you, what you've given up does not compare to, to what the- you're going to receive in, in eternity and the age to come. And now 
It's not, it's not just eternity and now. Something good is coming from whatever God's asking you to wait for. Ooh. Something good. Something good is in the tension of what God is asking you to wait for. Something good is in that tension. But you have to believe that he is good. Yes. Right? Uh, Hebrews eleven six. 6. You must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen. And his rewards are for the now and for the age, age to, to come, come, though with persecutions, right. though with Suffering. tensions, though with sufferings. You're going to get made fun of. It's going to hurt. You're going to be crying out to God, but it's all worth it. If you don't believe that, then you can't do that. And we had believed that. We also were tested in how much we believe that through our trials. So it wasn't just going through it well. It was being stretched right. to truly believe it and go through it well. Which I love analogies about the crushing of wine, right? Like the crushing of the grapes, the crushing of the olive, yeah. the, the making of a pearl, oh. the making of a diamond. Yes. None of these things are without pressure, without that rough sand, mm. without the rough, without you know, the crushing, crushing with, right? Without someone's foot crushing them grapes right. and them olives. There's a process to it. And for what? And there's for, a time. Time. And this culture, man, it's just, you guys are, you know, we're like fast, Burger fast, King. now, now, Gotta now. Gotta have it my way right away. And God is like, look at the farmer. And that's why you have to study agriculture things because you're like, I have no concept of waiting. Big city living and GMOs is no good for us. <laughs> Pesticides, right? So we get the food right now. We don't get to process planting in the summer, reaping in the next spring. Exactly. So you have to go, okay, God, I need your perspective because this world's perspective is now fast. Give it to me right now. And if I can't get it right now, instant gratification, I don't want it. Right. But God is saying, you're not going to take your culture and the way you think you were made. You need to put on my culture and my ways. That's so good. Cause we, we, God is, why is God pointing us to natural means? Because he created it. It's his, it's his ways. It's, it's his uh, order. Order. And he, he points to the natural ways because we're natural. We respond to the, his natural order through other natural systems. But those natural systems also reflect supernatural. Right. Right. When, G when Jesus says to, the, to Peter and the others, he says, he says, that which you loose on earth will be as loosed in heaven. And that which you bind on the earth will be as bound in heaven. There's this relationship. Mm -hmm. And so if we can learn natural principles through natural systems that we can see with our own eyes, We'll pointing. Reap, pointing to heaven, we'll reap supernatural rewards. Amen. We'll reap natural and supernatural rewards. Amen. So we're both waiting, trusting God, and in his right timing, we meet each the other. The appointed time. The appointed time. And yet we still gotta wait another year. And then we still gotta wait when we're when we're supposed to start dating. But because of the waiting we learned before, we also received equipment. We didn't just learn how to not be dismayed by their faces. We didn't just learn how to have endurance and patience. Right. We, 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 we developed character. Yes. God developed godly character within us. Godly, godly. The crushing made good wine. It made good wine. It made good wine so that we would taste sweet to one another and get intoxicated with one another. But also, the, we learned his processes. Yes. So because I had learned those processes, when I pursued you, I learned the process of pursuing the blessing too, talking to your parents and, and the pastors as well. Right. And then when, when we had delays, we had a six, six month delay. Right. Because you were trying to find a job and then it took longer for you to come. Because the first job opportunity didn't pan out. That was a difficulty. And it was waiting again. And there was more waiting. Yes. But then when the door finally opened up, and the reward was so great. And I feel like those last testings was almost God saying, I want you to see what I've produced in you through these previous times of waiting. Amen. It's like passing a test. And then so when we got married, that first kiss was so special. Right. 
Then it ends up all over the newspaper, right? All over the world, right? And to us, it, it just felt like a kiss from heaven. But that was for our purposes. That's what God wanted to do with us. That's not what God wants to do in everybody. Yes. What God does want to do in everybody is how, what, however that reward is intended to be, how he has crafted it for them. And maybe an impact on their children. Maybe you're breaking off on previous things that parents now look at and go, wow, you guys are amazingly blessed. Mm -hmm. Maybe opportunities that create such security in one another in ways that they never had security before. Maybe opportunities for mission work where there's such a unity between the two of them that their mission work, they lean on each other and in the Lord for strength. Mm -hmm. Whatever way God has intended to produce great fruit from previous times of waiting so that when the when the uh when the unification comes it's because this is our ministry this is what God has laid down for us if we didn't go through what we did we wouldn't have this right now exactly likewise for anybody else for whatever God's called them to right and the waiting doesn't end because even when we got married then we were waiting for another child and right. that was an eight and a half year struggle so we with had, infertility. We had Jael within the first, well, we conceived with Jael within the first year, had her in the second year. And that six months later, we, we, we adopted Maria. And then uh, after you healed from the first because of the C-section, we went through infertility for eight and a half years. And it's waiting again. And that was real hard because, again, what did I lay down? I had laid down... I want seven kids. <laughs> seven kids. <laughs> I don't have no seven kids. I got three. Mm -hmm. But even the three, it was like one, two. Eight and a half years. Here's a third. Yeah. And then, you know, we're actually hoping for another child. I'm not pregnant, but we, we, but we're, we're praying, praying and for we're hoping one. and we're addressing that. And, and there's, there's, we won't go into all that, but there are some prophetic revelations that, that we believe that God had spoken that we're yeah. holding on to and now we're in this waiting again and and it's so hard it's a different kind of waiting you would think that all of our previous tension of waiting and experiences that we had gained beforehand would help us go through this kind of well, waiting it but does. that deal, it, it does it has yeah but it also has revealed how much more Whew. got Christ likeness we could still have developed within us because waiting for this what happened with Eliana, the, the third child, the waiting for that, interestingly enough, right before she came, yep. I didn't even think about that. Right before she came, I fell into hardcore like frustration and discouragement and like near despair and depression. Yeah. For like four or five months. Yes. Because I was so perplexed and frustrated by the lack of the 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 the, the promise, yeah. what we felt was a promise, right. having come to pass. And it did cause me to question. It didn't cause me to question the character of God, the personality of God. It caused me to question our, my relationship with God. What right? do you mean? It, did I hear well? Did I hear? And it confused me further because we had community bearing witness. And we had prophetic to words. That prophetic word as well. And more children would come, yeah. Right. So it wasn't, and is it biblical? Well, Samuel, Sarah I, uh, with Isaac. It, it's Elizabeth a biblical thing. With, Can God still, yeah. pause. Can God still be doing biblical like things with people? for whatever generational purposes at hand now. Yes, because we are living testaments. We are living testaments. Yeah. You're talking about you and I? Yeah, well, everybody. We, everybody. A, a, right. In Christ. Right. But, but what I'm saying is, principally speaking, he is the same God yes. yesterday, today, and forevermore. Right. right? He may have new things or new, uh, 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 what's the word? New, new, um, what, what, there's a word for this. There, there, there might be new developments in his overarching plan, mm -hmm. but his ways remain the same. Mm. His actions may be different, or they may just vary for different purposes during different ages or different mm. generations. Mm. But he's still trying to produce Christ's likeness in all of us. Yep. 
and he will use the tension of time to do so. Yes, he will. He will use the he will use the prophetic word and then the the testing of that prophetic word to do so. Yes. So when we when Melody and I look back on some of these uh, uh, mm. uh, biblical themed scenarios and go, well, he has done th- stuff like this before. I get it. You know, I'm not David. I get it. I'm not Abraham. But the way he's tested David, he may test somebody else. The way he's tested Abraham, he may test, the way he tested Hannah and Sarah, the way he tested Mary and Martha, he may test again. And so how did you share, how did you fight that depression? How did you, what did you do? Well, I did what it said in, in, in uh, 1 Timothy 1.18, that there was a series of events, but so I'll couple it. Uh, First Timothy one eighteen talks about. Let's go through the rest of it. There, it said, "Waged a good warfare." Yeah. So, uh, so one of the things I did was we we I was reminded that that praise is our breakthrough. Right? Come on, Jesus culture. Um, what is that couple that we like that that sang that particular song? Yeah, Melissa and Jonathan? No, no, no. That the, the couple with the blonde hair. Katie Thorwalt or something. Yeah, that's Kate, it. Katie. Brian and Katie yeah, Thorwalt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I like that song. That's a good one. Um I praise him through my breakdown. Yeah, that that one. Oh, yes. That one. You, that's another thing. Are there not powerful <sighs> spiritual songs and psalms still bitten, being written today? There that are, are. That are mm. that are biblical. Yeah. I'm not just talking about the catchy ones. Some of right. the catchy ones are great too, but I mean it's the ones that are like being birthed out of the spirit of God. Anyway, waging good, the good warfare, holding faith and good conscience, right? Not letting my faith be shipwrecked. That's what the mm, enemy had in mind. That's what he wants. The enemy had in mind for me to question, this is good. Through the tension of the waiting, mm. the enemy's intention, mm, Come on. the enemy's intention for the tension is to shipwreck your faith. Come on. The Lord's intention for the tension is to strengthen your faith. The enemy wants to bring condemnation. The Lord wants to increase conviction. Conviction would lead, would, would mm. lead you through repentance back to God. Condemnation would use shame to drive you away from God. It's good. Tension, God's intention in the tension is to strengthen your faith. But you have to be obedient to the things that he says. I had remembered how I heard a preaching that part of the benefit of Abraham's regular monuments, the the altars that he would place everywhere he went and met with God. And then Isaac and Jacob had done some similarly or reestablished places where God, he met with God, even at wells and whatnot, was that every time they, because they were nomadic, every time that they would revisit they would visit again those places. They would see that altar and remember. Many times in the Psalms, and God would tell Moses and the people, he says, remember, remember how I pulled you out of Egypt. Tell the children. you had to remember. And so I had to remember. Mm -hmm. And as I was remembering the things that God had said, not just about this thing, but I also had to remember how God has performed his promises in other areas. Good. So I had to assimilate other promises to hold further for this promise, which was hard because then I also had to reestablish the relationship because that's what the enemy was getting at, right? Because I said I wasn't trust, I, I was not lacking in belief of God's character, but I was because I was I was lacking in belief that that character was being properly shown to me. So it was kind of a test of faith. It was a test of faith. So you had to acknowledge that you were feeling this way. I had to acknowledge it. You were praising and remembering who he is. So I would say I had to acknowledge it. I had to confess it. And then I had to choose to proclaim the opposite of what I was being hurt by. I had to choose to proclaim the promise through song and I did it through song. So thank God, yes, uh the Helsers, um Jonathan Melissa Helser, mm. Sound Mind. They did a deal, what was that during COVID? Yep. And 
a segment called Sound Mind. So good. Because because I could feel that my mind was being attacked. It was Battlefield of the Mind. Yes. And and uh, my son, Joyce Meyer, right? Battlefield of the Mind. I uh, I was being attacked. And praise being my breakthrough, I heard a preaching. I wish I remember who that was. Talked about how sometimes you have to praise your way through the breakthrough, which is such an act of faith because in the moment of the praise, you're not really feeling it. Right. It's not stirred up soul. by the Spirit. Come on, that's, that's David, David, right? David, said. right? Oh, so, well, how, do, how do you say it? Oh, soul, why are you downcast? Yes. Hope in God. Put your hope in Come God. Come on. Yes. Hope I, in God. And I had to... And that was so hard. I couldn't do it. But so biblically, what I remember, Ben and her, I believe, no, that's Ben her, uh, Aaron and her holding up <laughs> the movie, Ben her, Aaron and her holding up Moses's arms, which but was a couldn't. sign of, because he couldn't hold up his arm. He was getting old and frail. Yeah. He didn't have the strength to open up his arm because every time he drooped his arms out of fatigue, the armies of the Lord with Joshua were failing against Am Amalek, right? But every time that came back up, they, you know, sometimes I don't exactly understand how this might work, but sometimes spiritual warfare rises and fall with our own faith. And, and getting the right people around you to help hold so you thank up. Thank God for my wife. I asked her to come behind me and lift up my hands and help me sing this song, Sound Mind. And man, something broke. Yep. And uh, that was right and before the Lord we is my to remember. Melissa Helter, it was also his strength. It was about his strength. I can't remember the name, but you were talking about God, give me strength, give me strength. And you said, babe, come pray for me. Yes. And I and, and I held up your hands yeah. and I prayed over you. And the Lord was giving you directives what to pray. And I was telling you, babe, pray this off of me. Yes. Babe, break this off of me. Babe, call out this uh this lie. Because uh what is that? First uh, Second Corinthians ten five, right? That our that we tear down every lie of the enemy. Yes, right? our weapons of our, our warfare are not carnal. Are not carnal, but and mighty. we tear down every every argument that comes against the truth, comes against God's word. And so I had to confess it, and I needed your help to do so. Right. And we tore those things down, and so we waged a good warfare. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. We, the Lord gave me His strength. Because the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. The Lord is my refuge. He gave me his strength. We fought together. We fought together, not against one another, right. but together. Together we're better. And, and, and that deal broke off. Yes. And it was a combination of something psychological. I do believe that people have psychological depressive situations. I do believe at the same time that some of those situations, if not most of them, are also spiritual either because they're taking advantage or they're in, in, inducing a depressive state because that's what depression means to press down so when we broke that deal my psychological state arose with it and i had to continue confessing truth and man that broke off and then i didn't realize the timing of that it was a month and a half later six weeks later we conceived eliana and I think the also the the practical side of it was related to what when you're what we waiting, following God and whatever He's asking you to do, serving while you're waiting, you're not being lazy while you're waiting. You're saying, God, I'll do whatever I got to do while I wait. He may say work while you wait, and He may say stay quiet while you wait, and He may say do this while you wait. So what, while we were in the waiting, that eighth year is when God open the doors for us to check our fertility. So that's also good because we did, you, you, you were really practical with your faith. You have to be practical with your faith because some people are like, I'm just praying for God to open my womb, but it's good to go get checked to find out what's wrong with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? We have medicine for that. And I went to the doctor. You were in a new job with new insurance that would allow us first to do that. And there was something blocking my uterus. Right. There was a polyp blocking. I had to take the faith and the step of surgery. Now, that was our practical step and story. I, I know of another testimony. I know of two other different testimonies. One of them being this couple wanted a child. They had, they had no children. And, but, but the Lord gave them a word. They gave them a name for the child. In a dream, and years passed by, and it was crushing them, crushing them. Right. And then the opportunity of adoption rose, and the gentleman he was 
completely against it. He thought it was not God's way. He thought that's not what he expected it to be. He mm. thought that's us making it up for ourselves. That he he didn't know if he wanted to hold on to the dream, and he didn't know if he wanted to uh, uh, believe that there was anything more about it to begin with. Like he he was just in this stuck state, like I was, different circumstance. And long story short, I I I hate to ruin it. It's it's a really beautiful. I remember the story. But but I'm not, we don't have time to go through everything. But 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 it, did, it touched me so much. Go ahead. You remember the story? Yeah. God opened a door for adoption, and the mother who gave the baby said, "Could you please name her Chloe?" And, Chloe, and that was the name that they had in, in the spirit that they were holding years. on to. And they knew, man, this is God. This was God. And I think that's another part of waiting is releasing your expectation of how you wanted God to do it, of how you want him to do it, what it's supposed to look like, the way you thought it was going to be. And the you got to lay it. it down because because that child needed a family. Mm. Man, I get emotional about that, man. That child needed a family and God had prepared them to be this child's family. And they almost rejected it, rejected her because that's not how they envisioned it to be for their own, their own breaking, their own crushing, their own hopes, their own desires, their own dreams, which were so good, but yes. it wasn't had God. And had they remained in like, it's gotta be like crystallized this. in that way, yeah, 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 they yeah. would have missed the beauty of what God had it for them this way. And this way wasn't that way. It wasn't the way that God had for them. But because he softened their hearts and opened, and he knew this is what they would go through. Yes. He wasn't angry for the crystallization of their heart, uh, of the, the attempted so. He he knew that this was, it was, it was almost as if, let me see, mm. be completely open and honest with God. He is not, it's not, he does not know that you, it's not like he doesn't know how hardened you actually are. Right. Yes. Like, like he used Jonah, even when Jonah straight up was like, I know what you're going to do. I don't want to do that. And ran away. <laughs> and he got still, nope. I, listen, God chose you. God chose you. He still wants to choose you. And Jonah st still got reinstated to do what God told him to do. Even though Jonah did it with a bad attitude. I don't know, man. The ways of God is amazing. Mm -hmm. But, in but he had to case, wait three days in a whale. Well, he God is good at his discipline too. <laughs> like, That's another I conversation. I love Psalm 25 uh, verses 1 through 3. Oh Lord, I give my life to you. I trust in you, my God. Do not let me be disgraced. Or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. But disgrace comes to those who try to deceive others. We will not be put to shame. Come on. And that is something that you got to hold on to. As you wait for him. You got to guard yourself from getting in despair. And you want to guard yourself from bitterness. Bitterness, you can become bitter against God. Yeah. And the Bible says, be a bishop of your own heart. Mm. Guard your heart from bitterness, lest it spring up a root. And that root, it grows fast. It's, it's an ugly weed. And unless you guard your heart from bitterness, you become so bitter against God that when you get the answer, you can't even enjoy it. Or you can't receive it. Yes. And you said that. I got to get this depression off of me. I got to get in the right state of mind because when God answers, I do not want to have an attitude of finally. Oh, <sighs> well, now you can't even enjoy the blessing that God has for you because your heart is in such despair and bitterness. And so you want to say, God, give my heart right. So that when my gift comes, when my reward comes, when what I prayed for comes, I receive it with joy. Or when the gift of God comes in a way that I did not expect it. I can keep an open surrender. I can, I can have an open heart to receive it. Yeah. Amen. Um, so, guys, you know, we focused on this in the context of, you know, re relationships. And, and in our last case here, like, you know, um, you know, children. Yeah. But that, that could be for businesses. That could be waiting on uh, a, a promotion. That could be waiting on a calling from God. Yep. That could be waiting for, man, even a, a, a breakthrough uh, for faith in, in your family, even for your church, pastors, leaders. Like, 
There could be just this <clears throat> cry out to God because of even a prophetic word or or just just a biblical promise. Yeah. That God promises that he he's going to, you know, manifest himself among a people who love him, who know his word, who are bold to share him and be a great witness for him. And yet, you know, you might, you might, you might be given a difficult assignment like Jeremiah, maybe not that bad, but he ain't got no, not one convert. <laughs> um, but whatever it is, and just as you're tarrying in the waiting. So let's, let's end with this. How do you tarry in the waiting? Well, you talked about, I remember somebody once saying it like this, um, like a server at a restaurant while they're waiting they're serving right they're watching attentive for the hand to come up for for and the really really good ones they notice when they take you take a last swig of your water yeah, and they're right they're ready to water. refill it <laughs> but but while they're waiting they're serving yeah there are present things to do while we wait. While you wait. Yeah. Uh, Jeff from Cross Culture Church says, oftentimes the way to get to the promises of God is to be faithful with what he has for you right now. Do the last thing he told you to do. Do the last thing he told you to do and be faithful with what's in front of you. Yes. Which is what's going to propel you to his promises and be where you're at and be present. So some of us are going through transitions and the transition is long. Yeah. There's a tension in the transition. Yeah. Come on. There's a temptation to check out yeah. before you're actually even gone. Yep. And the Lord challenged me mm -hmm. strong because we were still forging strong relationship even in the last few months and weeks because we knew we were about to move to Florida. Mm -hmm. And I could hear, I could feel in my heart during one of our leader meetings to like, just pull back. Don't, don't, don't develop stronger uh, uh, connections because you're just going to be leaving anyway. And the Holy Spirit said to me, no, let it hurt. Continue to build, continue to, to, to grow the relationships. And when you leave, feel the pain of pulling away because that communicates this is something beautiful. This is something worthwhile. This is something special. Right. And, and because some relationships need to, to continue over time and space. And, and that was so good. I had to be present and continue the good work because we were still building the, uh, the, the, the house church and still strengthening it and passing the baton and whatnot. And that was so good. And man, I still keep up with that brother. Amen. Like he still builds into my life. My friend Jeff says, when we're believing for future promises of God, the only way to even get to those promises or to get to the next thing is to be faithful in the present. Right. If we're not faithful in the present, we will never get there. Yeah. So when, when I was, when we were house church pastoring in Chicago mm -hmm. and we were passing the baton of our particular house church to Jeff and Carol, our house church, mm -hmm. our, our, some of the elders in the church, um, I remember being in a meeting where uh, we were talking about things and we already knew we were about to make our transitions. And and uh, I, I was building with Jeff even closer than we've ever been. We've been there for years and we were growing really close. And I felt the temptation to be like, well, let, don't We're build. leaving. We're leaving. So don't, don't, don't get connect. too close. Don't get too close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guard your heart. Mm. But the Holy Spirit interrupted me right when I had that thought. He said, no. Let it hurt. Mm. And I paused. Let it hurt. Let it hurt. He says, because when, 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 when you are in good terms with somebody and you build a strong relationship and a, and a strong friendship and you feel the pain as distance, that tells you that's because it's meaningful. He said, stay present. Build as if you're not going anywhere. Now, of course, there's pr practical things to do for transitions and stuff. Right. But with that heart. And then when it's time to go, let it hurt. Wow. Because that's when you know it's sweet. And I think that goes back to the concept of the crushing. Mm. The crushing can be sweet when you recognize what you're producing. Yes. The crushing can be sweet when you recognize what, what you're producing. What it's producing, yes. When you know it's producing good fruit, good juice. Good wine. Good wine. Right? Good olive oil. Good, oh. Then... <laughs> 
then you know that the crushing is not just for crushing sake. It's for others. It's it's for others. Mm -hmm. It's so that the fruit that's produced gets to be bitten off of and go, oh, that's good fruit. What is that? Yes. And then, and then you proclaim it to God. Yes. But we we can't understand that God's producing great character, great fruit, great juice, great wine, great oil. Come on. And that's all done by the Holy Spirit Yeah. when we yield. Amen. If we lose sight of that, then, then it's like, no, no, no. Sometimes we just got to let it hurt and rejoice in the sweetness of it. And I think of, you know, Jesus is our example. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Come on. He said, take up your cross and follow me. And I just imagined as I, we were per preparing for this message and praying for about this podcast, I just imagined us holding on to Jesus. Though it is painful, though he's the one making you wait, man, I'm just going to hold on to you. Yeah. I'm just going to hold on to you. Though yeah. I feel like you're hurting me in a yeah. sense, I'm holding on to you. I ain't letting you go. Come on. And it's like, even when Jesus endured the cross, right. it was the joy that was set before him that, he endured the that cross. helped him to endure. He held he on knew. to the Father as the Father was, because we know that the Father put his wrath. Mm -hmm. As the Father is instilling justice on the Son, the Son is holding on to the Father. He understood the purpose of the crushing so he can experience the tension of it as sweet. And then what is the reward? that he gets exalted above every name and every mm. being at the right hand of God over all things. When we can keep that in mind, we can endure the crushing as sweet. Mm -hmm. And I think about Hebrews 11. You know, you have those who went through crushing and they got the reward in heaven. Right. And then you have those who had crushing and they saw reward here on earth. Right. And you have to live in that tension right. of saying, not my will, your will be done. Yes. And so, you know, we, I think we should end with that. You know, yeah, like, and, trust and even him. through that, the Holy Spirit will give you peace in the midst of it. Because even while Paul and Silas were in prison, they could sing songs. Yeah. So, like I said before, you're not just waiting for eternity. Even those who didn't see the fullness of it, they received something even while they were being crushed. Yeah. So, yeah, I, that's just the encouragement, like living in the tension through the not yet. Uh, that's how we endure. How we endure. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to Hanging with the Fabians. This is CD and Melody. HWTF. <laughs> yeah. We hope this blessed you. Go to our website, cdandmelody.com. Go ahead and press give, give to this ministry. We want to continue giving you good content like this. Yeah. Go on to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, hit um, no the notification button, share this message with others. Share it, share it, share it. Whether you're listening to on Apple, Spotify, wherever, just share this message because we just want to continue to spread the truth so that we can wait especially in these end times. Because Jesus said in the end times, lawlessness will abound. The offenses will grow. The, uh, the, the love. love of many will grow cold, but he or she who endures through to the end shall be saved. Guys, if we're living in the end times, we're raising up, we want to raise up a generation that will know how to endure to the end. through to the end and how to well, how does it well. live through the tension of the not yet how to wait well come on you guys have a great week god bless you peace hanging with the fabians is produced by renald abel with the support of judith george editing by will fonchum and renald abel and video recording and audio production by renald abel video intro by Darrell jones and music by michael carbone if you'd like to support our host, CD and Melody Fabian of Hanging with the Fabians, you can visit cdandmelody.com. See the links in the show notes. This is Melody Fabian. We love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you and peace.